What's up, YouTube? It smells like Vin here, and uh, I'm gonna be bringing you guys another animal review. Uh, happy Election Day. Um, I'm not old enough to vote, but I still had a day off from school, so it's pretty cool. Um, and I lately have been very, very into 60s psych music. Uh, psychedelic rock, acid rock, and uh, especially um, 60s psychedelic garage rock. Um, it's just been something I've been interested in lately. Um, so if any of you guys know any good uh, 60s, you know, late 60s psych rock bands, garage rock bands, uh, please list them. Uh, because I am craving that right now. I'm really in the mood. I've been listening to Blue Cheer, uh, this album, which obviously I'll get to. Um, um, I am probably going to get a few albums from Electric Prunes, Cream, Misunderstood. Jefferson Airplane, I listen to a lot of Pink Floyd, so I'm, I'm, I'm really into the psychedelic type stuff right now. Um, and so I figured, why not celebrate that with reviewing the album that many people consider to be the first psychedelic rock album of all time, uh, the psychedelic sounds of the 13th Floor Elevators. And the 13th Floor Elevators were un undeniably influential in the formation of psychedelic rock in the 60s. Um, you know, did they start it? Well, you can debate it. Um, and the people who do say that have a pretty good argument, I mean, the only popular band at this point who were um, adding psychedelia to their music was like the Beatles. Um, but this was even before they really got psychedelic. This was before Sgt. Pepper's, before um, Pipe with the Gig to Dawn by Pink Floyd, before All You Experienced by Hendrix, before there was one more album that's really influential for psychedelic rock, and I can't think of it right now. But it was before like the, the big albums of psychedelic rock. It was before Blue Cheer, you know what I mean? Shit like that. It was it just it predates a lot of what many people consider to be like the apex of psychedelic rock. Um, so yeah, I think a case could be made that it was the real start of psychedelic rock in the 60s. So let's talk about it. The music itself is um, kind of like an, uh, an uh, upbeat folk sound. Um, it ranges, there's like three different types of songs. There's um, songs like this, which is a highlight off the album, Splash One it's called. Really dreamy, really warm, um, you know, kind of simple drum beat in the background. Really uh, are nice distorted guitars, or not like heavily distorted, but distorted to create a nice psychedelic ringing tone. Really, um, kind of laid back vocals and a really, really nice song. Um, and then you get songs like You're Gonna Miss Me, which are more of the time, um, kind of an upbeat, almost early Beatles kind of sound, like from their old albums, like Help and stuff. Um, but just with that psychedelic touch. And then you get songs like Roller Coaster, where uh, the electric jug comes, excuse me, uh, comes out with electric dr uh, drug, drug. Eh, that wouldn't be too far off, but electric jug is an instrument that they use on the sound that gives it its distinctive kind of um, off-kilter feel, um, and you're probably going to hear it in the next track, um, Reverberation. Um, and it just adds this, like I said, disorientating kind of, uh, uh, um, what's the word, off-kilter feel. Um, so, yeah, it, it does have variety, this album. Um, but, uh, you know, a couple of the songs do follow the same kind of uh, line, um, but it's not bad at all. The album has 12 tracks and it's only 35 minutes, so it's, it's a nice compact package of uh, early psychedelic rock. So, um, the vocals on this album are another thing. They add this really weird feel to the album. It has a very wild feel. Um, which helps, I think, this album uh, make it sound otherworldly and, and trippy, which is, of course, what uh, all psych rock, especially in the 60s, was trying to achieve. Um, um, 
with the guitar is another thing I really like about this album. And, and I guess the thing with this album is that it's hard to talk about because it's not obviously psychedelic. And by that, I mean when you hear it, you don't automatically think like, whoa, that's trippy, dude, you know what I mean? It's, it's, the more you listen to it, the more psychedelic it sounds. And the main reason, in my opinion, is because of the production. And I know some people are like, really? You know, production doesn't form an album and put it into a genre. Um, but the production on this record is rough. It has that cool 60s garage sound, but because it's rough, it gives the instruments and, and the singing and just the whole album this kind of haze, this kind of hazy sound. Um, and it makes the guitar sound really, really distorted. It makes the vocals sound really reverbed. The production is legendarily reverbed. Everyone talks about how, how much echo and reverb is put into the mix. And that's cool because it, 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 it gives it that psychedelic edge. If the album was just this folk rock kind of album and the production was super clean, this album would barely be psychedelic. But because the production is so rough and rugged, it, it gives these songs this kind of haze, this psychedelic, trippy haziness that, in my opinion, takes the psychedelic elements of the album and pushes them to the heights that the band wanted them to be at. So it never, it, it never has like really, really overly psychedelic elements where if someone would hurt it, they'd be like, oh yeah, psychedelic rock. But it's subtle, and that's what I really like about it. The, the psychedelia is subtle in the psychedelic sound of the Dead Floor Elevators. Um, the flow is great. Like I said, there's really three types of songs. The really laid-back ones, the kind of wild, almost psychobilly-sounding early Beatles kind of songs. Um, and then just the, the mind trips, like songs like Roller Coaster and stuff like that. Um, another defining characteristic of this record is, like I said, the electric jug, which some people think is annoying. And at first, you're kind of like, what is that that's going to get annoying? But the more you listen to it, it totally adds to the album and gives it that kind of cool 60s sight sound. Um, so I, I like it a lot. Um, the bass and drums, or the rhythm section, all good, but the bass is actually surprisingly pretty up in the mix. Um, but there's certain songs where I wish it was a little bit higher. Um, but it's, it's, it's still pretty up there on the mix. Um, the drums are cool. Again, they have so much reverb, but every time the drummer hits a snail or a wing shot, it just creates this like echo. Um, and it gives, again, the really psychedelic feel to the record. Um, the lyrics are another thing. A lot of these songs follow the whole girl, kind of boy story. Um, which was, of course, normal for the time. But other songs like Roller Coaster, and I know I keep mentioning Roller Coaster, because Roller Coaster is, like, in my opinion, where a lot of the really psychedelic elements of this album shine through. Um, and uh, it's about opening your mind up and you know, all this kind of psychedelic stuff, which is um, part for the course for psychedelic rock at the time. So, yeah, um, this is a sick album. This really is. Um, if you're interested in getting in early 60s psychedelic garage rock, you cannot go wrong with this record. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, it, 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 it also, if you're interested in the roots of psychedelic rock, then I, I can't suggest picking it up enough. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really enjoyable 60s psychedelic garage album. Um, the songs are just short enough is another thing I like too. They just run their course nice and nice. They're not too, um... Well, they're not... That was one of the more psychedelic elements of the record. Not elements, moments of the record. Um, they're not too long, not too short. 
perfect length. Uh, dude, listen to those guitars. They have such a sharp, ringing tone to them. And again, that would not have been brought out if it weren't for the production on this record. So yeah, this is a, a, a fantastic record. Um, I plan to give it up tons more listens, um, and I definitely plan to, this band doesn't have that many albums, but I definitely plan to get their um, sophomore record, I can't think of it right now, but it was released in 67, just the next year, which in my opinion was the real year for Psychedelic Rock, and um, yeah, pick it up, great album, hope you guys enjoyed this review, um, and if you're into Psychedelic Rock, pick it up, see you guys next time.